Hello, my name is Dale Hawthorne. Welcome to my channel. And what price knowledge? You know, I, I do have a previous video on don't let anyone shame you for reading. So you want material and you want it at a good price where it's not going to break your budget and as much free as you possibly can. And I've talked here about 1970s prices. This is my copy of C.S. Lewis's book, The Great Divorce. I got it in the late 1970s. And the cover says a dollar fifty. So yeah, a couple dollars are going to be uh, the price of many of these. Many um, the books I'm going to mention. You don't have to get any of them. I'd advise you not to get any of them unless that's a real area of your interest and uh, something you're working on for education or something like that. Or maybe you're just doing your own self-study. Yeah, maybe you're doing a thing that uh, Matt Damon's character did in Goodwill Hunting, um, using what resources you have to get the education by doing the reading which you probably do in a college class anyway maybe you don't have a professor introducing it but you may have a, a preface in the book introducing it and talking about it so getting the knowledge on your own so oh before we go further uh, please click like and subscribe there are going to be more things uh, gold nuggets i'm going to be dropping here uh, in my, on my channel from time to time and it is a Christian channel so there is a great deal of Christian content here but there's going to be other things too which might interest you so please click like and subscribe and you'll be informed of the content and uh, I thank you for that so what I'm going to direct you to they aren't going to be print books like this one this uh, one I had Andy I'm going to do a uh, video on this one in a moment um, later today but uh, yeah, I'm not talking about print books. Print books, uh, even used in used bookstores, uh, can usually go like, uh, uh, if it's one that's heavily highlighted, you might get a couple dollars and you might find it hard to read. But um, books that are really readable, you know, usually around four to five dollars a pop, sometimes up to ten dollars if it's rare, if it or if it's uh, uh, some something which uh, is kind of a niche topic, uh, you may find it much much more. You know, used books can sometimes go into the hundreds of dollars now if it's on some sort of uh, niche topic. So um, what I'm going to be talking about here are ebooks, not print books, but ebooks. And I use myself Amazon Kindle. It's a free download. Um, Android, um, iPhone, uh, tablets, and uh, PC. I do have it on my PC. I do use it, as a matter of fact, for some of my videos uh, uh, to uh, display content for books. And uh, I do have it on my tablet here. This is my tablet, my Samsung tablet. It doesn't have to be an Amazon Kindle tablet. So you can download it there. And I do a lot of my reading of ebooks on my ta uh, tablet. And I take it around. Uh, it's bigger uh, than the, uh, my, my Android phone. Yeah, I got an Android, not the iPhone. So <laughs> um, I, I just picked up the Android. It works for me. So, and you can find this Amazon Kindle, you can also find it at Google Play, uh, books, uh, the books section is also free, um, and that's easily installed on Android. I don't know about how well it would install on any other operating system, but if you got Android, it works there. And I would assume that it would work on a, um, iPhone 2 and my iOS operating system simply uh, because uh, that's a large part of the market out there and uh, I can't see Google turning their back on it. And uh, if you, I don't know if uh, Barnes and Noble, I haven't looked into it for a long time, if they still have their Nook Reader, if they have their Nook Reader, you might be able to use that too. But on Amazon, I'm going to be concentrating on Amazon. They're not paying me. I'm not being sponsored by them in any way. And uh, I'm just simply saying, you know, I can find the type of books I'll talk about mostly on Amazon. The free ones are on Amazon prim primarily. Um, you might be able to download them somewhere else. Uh, maybe like uh, Google Play Books or something like that. Again, the PDF perhaps. But a lot of the content I'm going to be talking about is going to be old, but free translations and sources that have long since passed out of copyright, but they're still valid. And if you're in college, you might find them interesting for bone up on a topic but if you're taking a specific course on a specific author specific subject i'd encourage you to uh, use the translations and sources that your professors would designate for your papers and tests i could see you easily getting downgraded if you use a free source instead of the one the professor wants you to but i don't do the grades i 
couldn't see myself doing that if it was a valid translation, a valid reference within the uh, source you're using. But uh, that's the way some professors are. So, uh, and when you do uh, uh, refer to something within a paper or on a test, try to paraphrase as much as possible, indicate that you've understood what the source is saying, quote it, especially if you're using a paper, give a direct quote, give a citation, page number, etc. Of course, do that. Don't plagiarize. I don't encourage you to plagiarize because um, some places uh, I do know that uh, plagiarism uh, has been uh, some in the news lately, but it gets you automatically failed and expelled in some places, perhaps. So let's take a look at some of the things you can get for free. Xenophon, the ancient Greek author, translation of his work, Hellenica. This is just a picture of the um, graphic that it has in... Uh, in uh, Amazon uh, books, but uh, this is free. You can read the whole thing for free, and it's Xenophon, the Greek historian's follow-up to Herodotus, the ancient Greek history, yeah, the Herodotus, the original historian, and uh, Hellenica, follow-up to uh, Herodotus and Thucydides, taking from the end of, to the end of the Pel Peloponnesian War and, and beyond. So, if you want to read those areas, which you can see, Perhaps you're reading Thucydides on the Peloponnesian War, and you want to find out how it really ended. Uh, Xenophon has the earliest account of it. So, another one. Friedrich Schiller, The History of the Thirty Years' War. Still considered to be a valid history. Um, I, if you're, again, if you're in college, you're using this for papers or citations or anything, I'd check out anything he says against a more modern source to make sure that what he says hasn't been debunked by more modern uh, histor history writing, but if you're just looking on getting a summary of what happened during the Thirty Years' War, Schiller is considered to be uh, a viable source for that. So these two, which I've referred to right now, are free. Next ones I'm going to be referred to are the ones where you get the 1970s prices, and they're from Delphi Classics, and they do have a separate we uh, website, uh, Delphi, D-E-L-P-H-I, and I find that they collect together a lot of works into a fairly large file, but it contains usually an introduction to the author, the author's works, and like that. And you can find uh, classic literature, classical art, all in the same thing. And uh, for I just simply sometimes read. I can get I can read the uh, ancient Greek myself, the Latin. So I will sometimes just look at that. I'll um, if it's uh, paintings like that, I'll simply look at that on my tablet. And uh, yeah, if you're looking at art on a tablet, it's not the same as being in a gallery or museum, but you can still like it, still appreciate it there. So let's take a look here. Oh, Bacchylides, yeah. One of the ancient Greek poets, one of the underrated ones, not terribly well known, but uh, he did have a very dramatic flair in some of his poems. And that's a picture of uh, on the cover of a uh, uh, cherry tear stature, uh, one which is uh, fairly well known. The picture is used often. It's a small price. I haven't gone into this, so don't really buy Bacchylides unless you're really interested in his poetry and if it may be part of some sort of greater um, class on Greek alert poetry. But it just shows you you can get some of the uh, authors that you may not have heard of, maybe some of the ones outside of the main, mainstream of uh, what they teach in the literature classes and so on. But you can find them there on uh, um, the Delphi Classics. And I do have a lot of these uh, authors uh, myself on my tablet, which, uh, again, they're not the type, you, you know, if you give um, the, the people who are besides the main ones, like the main author, ancient authors like Plato, um, Virgil, um, Cicero, and the others. So if you want to look at some of the other authors and some of the later Roman authors, too, uh, C.S. Lewis, uh, he uh, did actually uh, read some of the later Roman authors, and uh, some of the only some of the books I've been able to find are the ones which uh, he really uh, you know, find anywhere or on Delphi Classics. So, if you're going into Latin, Ovid, yeah, Ovid, Metamorphoses, a uh, source for a lot of knowledge of a lot of the Greek myths and art of loving and falling out of love. Uh, the ancient pickup artists. In and out to uh, finding finding love, uh, so you find Ovid there too, and uh, beginning to end. And I do have a caution there. Uh, some of the older works, 
I found this, this is something that cracks me up still. But uh, if they're doing something with an ancient author, even especially if it's in Greek, if they find something that's a little bit spicy in the in what they're talking talking about, they won't translate it back into English. They'll translate it into Latin. So yeah, <laughs> may have to go find a more recent translation if you're going to a spicy passage. So Abed, and uh, if you're looking for art, John Singer Sargent, Lady X, Madame X, uh, um, his uh, famous infamous painting right on the cover, and you can find a. Uh, um, uh, images of his uh, artworks, uh, inter mentions of them, and details of them. Again, this isn't, I wouldn't say this is something if I were doing a graduate level work on Sargent that deals with him, that I, I would use this more as an introduction to appreciate his work, to understand his work. Maybe you go to a gallery or museum and you see his works there and you like them, you want to know more. Uh, for a couple bucks you can get uh, um, this whole uh, schmeal of his work. Yeah, that's so. And there's another uh, source you can also find uh, archive.org, and uh, still another alternative. And uh, um, if you can't find what you're looking for on among the old works on Amazon, it's more like a public library with uh, checkout and so on. You can find some of the works maybe in the 20th century um, that may not be in print, but they may be there. And again. You can do the like a public library where check out and read the book and so on again for research and again no plagiarism i don't want any, anyone to come back to me and say that they're plagiarizing because uh i said to do so no um you you cite paraphrase quote and you give page number as best you can uh some sources uh may not have literal page numbers so if you're using a kindle source maybe you could it should be um adequate to give a location number kindles do have location numbers or um or so, something like that so um so this is uh the kindle on my pc and it's showing the cover for uh an older translation of the seven against thebes i have that in the greek and english and i just wanted something i could carry around and uh, refer to the seven against thebes without having to carry carry around a print book or uh, having to uh, delve too deeply and this is free to me so th these are the ways you can look at some of the uh, and consider some of these older works there's there's a lot that's still valid as a matter of fact uh, say you know we can talk about rationalism and logic and science and like that but where do we find the starting point for that the formulation of the laws of logic begin with Aristotle and you can find find him in the Delphi classics too all all his works and uh, see the things which are there. So I uh, hope this is helpful. I hope this uh, can uh, may, may open your eyes to uh, some areas of literature which you and sources and like that you may not have seen before. Yeah, they got uh, even Karl Marx and some of the others on uh, Delphi Classics and you can find older translations there too. So I um, encourage you to continue reading, do your reading, look at the sources and uh, oh yeah, if you're into theology, you can find complete works of Augustine. They, I just downloaded recently Church Father Cyprian, some some of the others, and some of the other older translations of uh, early Church Fathers, the people between the a, a, who wrote after the apostles. Yeah, you can find them there too. So um, you don't necessarily have to pay a lot, or if anything, if you want to just become familiar with the content. And uh, one last thing on this, if you're, uh, sometimes if you want to look at the literal book, uh, this is my book uh, I just got in the mail yesterday, Euripides, um, Hippolytus, etc. I find the low classics easier for myself reading. Uh, okay, let's see, getting in with the Greek and the English on one side, so where if I, reading through the Greek and, and I find a word, I can just hop over to the other side, or if I find a translate, a passage which doesn't seem to make some sense, I can hop over to the English and say, hmm. Does that make any sense to me? But again, finally, you know, if you're in graduate school uh, and you're doing anything with classics and literature, use a, use a scholarly scholarly uh, book. This is Plato's uh, Gorgias. Uh, I used this back in, in college myself where you got the, the Greek there and it's got the uh, uh, textual apparatus at the bottom where you can find the different readings, different manuscripts like that. If I was doing 
uh, upper grad, upper level uh, uh, undergraduate work or graduate level work, I would I would use that uh, for my uh, uh, primary source for citations. And like that, if you're looking again to find out what you know, a quick way to find content, you read them in English. You can go to the one and then go back and look at particular passages in in one of those two. That's a way that would be possible. You may that would um, be a way that you could find work with through that without necessarily having to uh, go through and translate a whole work of uh, Plato on it on your own. So again, I tried to end a moment ago, but uh, hope this is helpful. Hope this opens your eyes. Hope this opens your horizons because uh, there's a lot of wonderful stuff, a lot of good stuff, a lot of bad stuff, you know, stuff we may be skeptical of, come of uh, disagree with, but uh, it's better to, to know what you're disagreeing with and why you disagree with it and why there's something you agree with, something you find, than to uh, just simply react upon some, something that you hear some, someone else say at some other time. So thank you for your time.